Why smart people do foolish things. Hi friends, it's Diane here at Someone Gets Me, and I'm here to talk to you about smart people doing foolish things. You know, like when somebody is doing something that is not smartest in the world and people say, you're too smart for your britches, or making decisions that don't make sense. Well, there's a reason for this, I think, and I've been around smart people. I am a smart person. I work with smart people on a daily basis, and we all make foolish decisions. We do foolish things at times. And so I started thinking about, well, how come smart people do foolish things? What's the point and what really happens? And so I have some ideas that I'd like to share here. And hopefully you can make a comment or let me know what you think about it. And it comes, my ideas are coming from my education, of course, and my intuition, but also from my own personal experience and the experience of the hundreds of thousands of people I've worked with over time. So this is kind of like one of those morning muses, if you will. Um, But the first thing I'm thinking about is that smart people can do surprisingly amazing things that even you as you hear my voice, everything you think you can do, it's you're more than that. You're bigger than that. I, I remember one time when I was going through a challenge and I was think, meditating a lot and thinking about things and I kept getting the message, there's more where that came from. There's more where that came from. And I believe that smart people have a really amazing connection to the overall possibilities of the world that are far transcend our, our thinking. So we can do amazing things, but we can also do amazingly foolish things or stupid things, whatever word you want to use. Foolish kind of goes with it by suspending our judgment, like pretending like our brain doesn't know any better, right? Or maybe by being so distracted by something we're thinking about that we miss the obvious in front of us or assigning um, a possibility to somebody that isn't really there. You know, like I used to always hear growing up, well, that person has potential. That situation has potential. And as a smart person, you often can see the potential in things. But just because it's a potential doesn't mean it's here yet and doesn't mean it's a thing. And so I think sometimes we act as if the potential is already happening when maybe it's not yet. And so we end up doing foolish things by getting ahead of ourselves or not really paying attention to the reality right in front of us. So I want to make a distinction here a little bit too about intelligence and how it all works. In everyday life, when people say, oh, um, you're smart or intelligent, we believe that it has to do with IQ and that somebody's got a higher IQ, so they make wiser, better decisions and they're smarter, so they can do more and they do better at things. Well, how come so many gifted people don't don't do that. They make foolish decisions and they do goofy things. I've done a lot of foolish things. Like how how does that work? Well, I think because the everyday definition of what it is to be smart doesn't account for executive functioning issues. It doesn't account for critical thinking, and it certainly doesn't necessarily account for all of the distractibilities and things that come along with the higher intelligence. So yes, a higher IQ is amazing and great things can happen. But there's also that side of it that can offer challenge, that can offer um, something that's maybe unexpected to somebody who's walking around going, well, you're smart. You should figure it out. I have had that happen to me hundreds of times in my professional career where other colleagues, other professionals would say, well, you're smart. You should know regarding things like websites. Um regarding things um, that are technology related, regarding things that are not in my wheelhouse as my primary information, you know, what my knowledge base is. And I used to laugh all the time. It's like, I help you save your own life. I can help you with that. And I know enough about technology and social media and stuff like that to make it, but I am not an expert. So just because I'm smart doesn't mean I know. I had a personal trainer one time who kept saying, well, you're smart. You know what to do. And I am smart, but I didn't know that. So that's one big place that I noticed that smart people do foolish things because 
we're we're in some way, I think, consciously or unconsciously trying to live up to an expectation about what this smart thing means. And it's a cultural um, energy kind of feeling that doesn't necessarily match to us. And so, and what I mean, I've heard it before, you know, you're too smart for your britches or you're so emotional, calm down or any of those things. And, and I know you have too. And I know we've said it, well, they're so smart, they should be able to see it. Now, interestingly, when we think about um, people who are smart getting caught up in things, cults look for the smart people. I worked with a client one time who was um, being groomed as an adult um, to um, and was trying to be invited into, groomed into, seduced into um, a, some kind of sex-related situation. Now, she never bought into it, but one of the things that happened was that she couldn't understand why she was smart and how she was starting to fall for all of it. And this was years before I met her when it was going on. And then she'd work with other people and found me. And she was really wrestling with how is it that I was so smart that I could fall into that trap so easily? And one of the things that I notice is smart people, if you can get a smart person to doubt their own reality, doubt what they think they know enough times, which is a form of gaslighting then it's easy to control them because they're trying to figure out how come it's not making sense. And while they're trying to figure out how come it's not making sense, that person that has ill intent motives can be trying to control the situation. So I see that happen often where we really have to use our critical thinking and our discernment skills as smart people because the propensity to be controlled by like self-doubt or um, other people blaming us for our reaction to what they're doing, all of those kinds of things that put questions into our world have the potential to bring about foolish things. Because smart people like to figure things out and they like to know what's going on and deep dive into things. So when somebody's reality is being questioned for whatever reason, I've had several situations in my different, but still, still the same kind of process where I'm working along and doing my work at, at, you know, over the history of my life. And, and pretty soon there's this game, I, I, I guess I, it's a way to try to control. And I was doubting myself and it took me a while to get out of it and remind myself that, you know, hold on. And I had to, had to have help with some of it because it was very seductive and very real. So if you're distracted by guilt, worry, shame, fear, unresolved grief, complicated grief, traumas, any of those things, then that can undermine your connection to your functioning, your decision-making, which then can lead to a smart person doing foolish things. So in the real world, we make decisions and we function by using our executive functioning, our ability to solve problems. But one of the things I'm noticing in the world these days is struggles with critical thinking. And I remember when I first heard the term critical thinking, I was in college. I was 17. I think it was my second year, somewhere in there. And I remember hearing the word critical thinking. And I remember thinking very, very loudly in my head, well, I don't want to learn that because I don't like to criticize. So the moment I heard what the definition of critical thinking was, I could get rid of that belief that had to do with criticizing because it doesn't, right? So critical thinking is associated with well-being and longevity. And when I look around the world today and I start working with clients today, many of the people who are younger, several generations behind me, they struggle with critical thinking. Or if I mention critical thinking, people go, oh yeah, you know, I should probably think through that. So critical thinking and the lack of use of critical thinking, I believe, is a big part of smart people doing foolish things. Because a lot of smart people, for whatever reason, either they weren't taught or they don't care to or they're in a trance and so therefore they're missing it or not using their cognitive skills of critical thinking. 
that allow you to think rationally and examine information in order to move forward in a, in a way that meets your goals and has you be happy and functioning with a disposition of kindness, right? Like, so critical thinking is a learned skill. It's the skill of being able to think through something. Is it real? Is it true? Does it matter? You know, I learned years ago, the question, is this going to matter in five years? If it's not going to matter in five years, don't waste a whole lot of extra energy on it. That doesn't mean don't care about it. It means have perspective, have understanding, think about it. Just because you read something online doesn't make it true. It might be true for that person, but that doesn't make it true, right? And just because you hear somebody say something doesn't make it true. And just because anybody says something and you just go right at questioning it or dismissing it, that's not critical thinking either. Somebody who's critical, cl- critically thinking takes the information that they're receiving, investigates in their own way with reliable sources and such, whatever the content is, and they use these skills to be able to see what's right for them or not. There's all kinds of ways to do it. And it's a way to use discernment versus judgment. And I think that's also a big piece of this because if something's not right for you, that doesn't mean it's not right for anybody else. And if it's right for you, it doesn't mean it's right for them. So discernment means I can examine something and then say, well, this doesn't work for me or this does work for me, period. Judgment is, this doesn't work for me, so therefore it's bad. Or this this works for me, and therefore it's good, or it's the only way. Because there's more than one way to do everything. So whenever we get caught in this, there's only one way to get where we're going, we're in a trap. We have abandoned our critical thinking skills, and our intelligence is going to start working against us by continuing to narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow. And what we want to do is be able to have enough expanse so that we're not doing foolish things. I see a lot of people who have a lot of intelligence making goofy, I call them goofy, foolish decisions because they didn't think it through. They didn't use critical thinking skills. They're smart. They didn't use their critical thinking skills. Now, some people who aren't necessarily considered smart or gifted also can have critical thinking skills, right? And this is where sometimes, Um, a neurotypical or maybe, you know, um, talented type person can exceed the production and the happiness and the joy of somebody who's profoundly gifted. And it's because the critical thinking skills makes the difference. So if I am neurotypical or I'm not quite gifted, but I'm talented and I'm just kind of like got something going on, but I'm not profoundly gifted way off the chain, then what I can find out is if I use my critical thinking and I take that skill to be able to examine what's true and what isn't and where my sources are and what's going on, I can actually excel above people who rely only on their intelligence and have abandoned or have weak muscles in the critical thinking department. So whenever I see a smart person doing foolish things, I look at the situation, I, almost like I'm watching TV at the time, even if it's you know live and in person, and I start seeing where the whole ability to critically think has been ignored or abandoned. And then here comes the foolish things. Some people might say it's like not, not listening to your gut. You know, like if my brain, if my gut says, oh, that's not a good idea, and my brain overrides it, then What's going on? Am I using my critical thinking to solve the situation or address what's happening? If I'm not using my critical thinking, most likely the choices in behavior and words will probably be foolish, goofy, not serving me in the highest way. So intelligence on one hand, critical thinking on the other hand are both assets. Both of them can work in our favor. And I think it's time 
in human history and culture and in all of our own personal development and evolution that we go within and we check on ourselves and say, am I using my critical thinking? Am I connected to my ability to critically think through a situation and do I use it? Or maybe I was never really taught about critical thinking. I know a lot of people who never really were taught about it. They were kind of like I used to be in the very beginning where I thought it meant to criticize. I had to learn how to use critical thinking and even what it was. And I've done this with a few people recently. I'm going, well, what about critical thinking? And they look at me a little bit confused. That means that they never learned it. Because remember, humans only know what we've been taught. If you haven't been taught about it, or you're hearing these words out of my mouth right now, and you're you're questioning or going, what? This is a place to really investigate. Because as we make decisions for our personal life, our community, our world, it matters that we think through things. And all too often, people out there right now are caught up in the trance, the trance of social media, the trance of you know, me, 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 that, you know, that focus on self and caught up in the trance of, I don't want to lose anything. So I'm going to do whatever I can to keep hoarding and being greedy. There's all kinds of trances going on out there. And our responsibility, I believe, if we're going to be awakened and we're going to see what's going on and we're going to move and expand who we are and what we're meant to bring to the world is to balance our intellect with our, with our critical thinking and allow both of them to serve us in a way. So we do less foolish things, but we're also paying attention to what's really going on around us. And we're willing to be um, accountable. We're willing to speak the truth and we're willing to stand up for what we say we believe in. I think one of the biggest disservices intelligent people do is put their heads in the sand and, you know, well, I can outthink this or I know this or I see this, you know, they, they see a situation and then they say nothing. I have many smart people in my world where I'm like, well, why don't you say something? You're gifted in that way. You have the knowledge. You've done the research. Say something. Put that idea out there and it gets poo pooed. You know, like, no, nobody will listen to me. No, I can't do that. No, it doesn't really matter. It's not important. Everybody knows it. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Things that are natural to me are revolutionary and amazing and insightful for others. And I have that experience with other people where they'll be sharing information with me and it could be in a casual conversation. And I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. So just because it comes naturally to you, does not mean everybody knows it. And if you feel that urge to say something, then do it. And getting in that perfectionism where it has to look a certain way or be a certain way, all of that is dismissing your ability to critically think through the situation, to use a higher disposition, a higher understanding to rationally say what's for the highest good of all concerned. And when we avoid that, piece, that critical thinking piece, we as intelligent people will find ourselves doing foolish things. And then we and the people around us will be paying that consequence. So what I would really like to see all of us do is kind of, as uh, Stephen Covey said, sharpen the saw, sharpen our daily skills around critical thinking. What are we doing to critically think through the world? When was the last time you saw um, something on any social media or news platform And then ask yourself, how true is that? Is that true? I mean, you know, like some of the news stations even are not even ranked as news with the SEC. They changed it to entertainment, but yet they still call themselves news because news is northeast, west, and south. That's what newspaper is, right? A paper that's northeast, west, south. So they still say news, but they're really an entertainment channel, which means... It's the same as watching Saturday Night Live. It's entertainment. It's not real news. And so sometimes, or sometimes you'll see something and because all everything that happens to us is filtered through our own reality, our own autobiography, the person who you're getting the information from's autobiography is part of the filter system. So that's why we want to use our filter system, our critical thinking skills to say, huh, is there another question here? I always ask and look for the second question. Like, of course, we want our world to be happy and peaceful and and people to get along. 
That's not the real question, though. The question is, how are we going to do it? That second question is the key. That's where critical thinking is. Because some people think, well, of course, we'll all be happy if everybody believes the way I do. Well, no, but that's what that person might think. So sometimes we have to be able to use our thinking. I know in history, there have been many leaders who were quite controversial that believed that if the world was going to be at peace or their country was going to thrive, everybody had to believe like the leader. And if the leader, if you didn't agree with the leader or you didn't believe like them, they killed you so that they could have peace in their land. Now, not everybody believes that that's, that's good critical thinking because I, I don't think that it is if we say we have reverence for humans, right? So you need to go within yourself and say, huh, how, how am I sorting the world? How am I using my skill set, my cognitive skills to, skills to really think through what's important to me, how I know it's important to me, and what am I willing to do for the highest good of all concerned? Because your, crit- your critical thinking will help predict your sense of happiness, your sense of well-being, and your longevity. Low critical thinking, people don't tend to live as long because they do foolish things. They make decisions that don't work. So think about this for a minute. Smart people doing foolish things has to do with critical thinking. You can have all the intelligence in the world, but my question is, how are you using it for the greater good, for the good of you and the good of all? So I hope, friends, today that this episode has got you thinking and got you shining that, sharpening that saw, shining that part of you about critical thinking and waking up a little bit more to asking even more discerning questions in a world that is full of all kinds of information that may or may not apply to you and may or may not be accurate to what's going on. So pay attention. And make sure that you're using your critical thinking skills and encourage the people around you to critically think through situations rather than just blindly believing something without really examining its real value, no matter what it is, whether it's a shirt you're going to buy, the dinner you're going to make, something bigger in the community, it it's, applies to everything. So there you have it. Friends, if you have anything that you would like me to talk about, any topics, please email me. My email's in the show notes. Feel free to contact me for a free 30-minute call if you want to have a discussion about this or any other topic because I love to connect with people and have a great conversation. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, remember to keep your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you because you're a rock star. You're here on purpose with a purpose. So go out there and let your light shine. Use your critical thinking. in in a beautiful concert with your intelligence. And you'll see uh, your world, our world, we will all benefit from all of us doing this together. Until the next episode, be well.